Hello, I'm Sarah. And I'm Lisa. And we are from the Naperville Public Library. And today we are bringing you the first in a series of videos that we are calling The Book Buffet. In this series, we will be serving you bite-sized descriptions of several books based on a common theme or genre. And every book that we share with you is available from the library in print format as well as digital format. Our digital platforms include Hoopla, Access 360, and Libby, which is the app you can use to access digital items available via Overdrive. All of these digital platforms are really user friendly, but I do want to give an extra little plug to Hoopla because with Hoopla, you will never be on a hold list. Every item that's available on Hoopla is always available to you. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. So today on the Book Buffet, we are bringing you titles that are culinary fiction and nonfiction, which is a very fun category that we chose because Lisa and I love to cook and eat food and read about books that are cooking and eating food related. So we're very excited. Yes, this was a really fun topic to select books for. Um, one of the few things I enjoy more than cooking and eating is reading while I'm eating. And reading about food when you're eating is just, it's the best. So let's get started. Uh, the first book that I'm going to share today is one of my very favorite books ever. Not just in uh, foodie writing, but just one of my books of of all time. It's called Home Cooking, A Writer in the Kitchen, and it's by Lori Colwin. And this is a collection of essays by Lori Colwin that all deal with food in some way, whether it's cooking food, shopping for it, eating it, sharing it, thinking about it, she has it covered. The essays are all fairly short. I don't think any are more than, than 10 pages. And what I like best about this book is Lori Colwyn's voice throughout it. The, the tone of her writing is very kind. It's very gentle. She's also very funny in some of the essays. And there's also really a lot of good information about food and home cooking techniques that are woven into the pieces. There are recipes, of course, throughout the book, although I wouldn't categorize this as a cookbook per se. And most of the recipes are for comfort foods. They're not fussy recipes. And this is just, it's just a real feel good book. And whenever I pick it up, I feel like I'm having a conversation with a friend. This sounds like a great book, Lisa. I love a book that is both memoir and recipe. It's like the perfect combo. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> and I have made a couple of the recipes. Um, there was one for, I'm not a big uh, cooked spinach fan, but there is a recipe for cream spinach with jalapeno peppers that is incredible. Okay, you said cooked spinach, and I was like, eh, but then you said jalapeno, and I'm like, I'm on board now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. So what book did you pick to share first with us today? All right, my first book is The Little Beach Street Bakery by Jenny Colgan. This book, I'm sorry, this is my cat. Um, this book <laughs> is about Polly Waterford, who unfortunately just got a divorce just lost her job, and just got evicted. So needless to say, Polly is having a rough go of things. And since she can't afford a place in her current neighborhood, she ends up renting a small, lonely flat in a seaside town where she attempts to work out her emotions by baking lots and lots and lots of bread. And I'm telling you, the descriptions of bread in this book are so good. There's like bread with seeds, there's yeasted breads, there's all sorts of breads. You're going to want to eat bread if you read this book, but you should also read this book if you want a lighthearted, happy, upbeat book about someone who gets a second shot at really having a life that they love. 
that sounds great, especially because I am all about the carbs, especially these days. <laughs> so this sounds like a great pick. Are there recipes in this book? There aren't. Um, that that doesn't happen, but I think that's a little less pressure sometimes. You don't have to try a recipe. You just have to imagine them, and then they're, like, perfect in their creation. You know what I mean? <laughs> Very true. That sounds really good. Um, my next book is actually a memoir. It's called Save Me the Plums, and it's by Ruth Reichel. You may recognize that name. Uh, she was a very famous restaurant critic for many, many years. And this is a memoir of her, of her time when she was asked to become editor-in-chief of Gourmet Magazine. And she really had a lot of hesitation about that job offer. She knew about food writing because she'd been writing about food for years and years, but she had no idea of how, ma how magazines were published. She had never been a boss. She had never been in any sort of managerial role. But she decided to take the plunge, and she took the job. And this is her memoir of that time. Um, it's not only a good book about food and uh, the magazine industry, but it's also I think a really inspiring memoir in general about a woman who she really stepped out of her comfort zone. She learned things, she made mistakes, she learned from her mistakes, she persevered, and it's, it's a very inspiring book. Plus, you find out a lot of inside behind the scenes stuff about the magazine industry, which I always think is super interesting. Yeah, I've heard so much about this book, not just from you, but from other staff members and just like on the internet, but it sounds like a great book, really. And I love to read books about people doing new things and really like thriving at them. So I could see that that would be really good. Mm -hmm. Has Ruth written any other books? She has. This is her fourth memoir, actually. Um, she wrote three others that start with her childhood and uh, go up through her young years to when she became a, a restaurant reviewer, and then this one. And she also wrote a novel called Delicious a few years back, which I read, and it was set in a restaurant, oddly enough, and that was really good as well. So she's, she's not only a talented restaurant reviewer, but she's just a talented writer in general. Very cool. My next book is Don't Call Me Cupcake, by Tara Sheets. This is the first in a series. The series is called The Holloway Girls, and this follows Emma Holloway, who has a special magic ability to bake wishes into her cupcakes. So she uses this ability to give people happiness in a variety of ways, but she makes a huge mistake when she gives Hunter Kane not one, but three sweet success cupcakes, because it turns out that Hunter is opening a fancy new restaurant and included with the restaurant is a new bakery, thus making him Emma's major competition in town. <laughs> she can't seem to escape Hunter no matter how she tries, especially when the town decides that they need to work on the summer festival together and she can't really seem to resist him either. So you should definitely check out this book if you want a fun, kind of steamy, enemies to lovers romance, and you should also check it out if you want to hear about many a delicious cupcake. Well, and who doesn't, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> So it sounds like this book is kind of different from the other ones we selected because there's an element of, um, I don't know if it would be fantasy or magical realism. There's some elements of that nature in there. Yeah, and it's not heavy on the fantasy. It is definitely more of a romance, but it's interesting to see um, her little magical ability with the cupcake baking and how um, she interacts with everyone who comes in to get cupcakes with her. Okay, great. Well, my last book, um, I actually cheated a little bit. My last pick is a series. 
It's the Faith Fairchild Mystery Series by Katherine Hall Page. And this is just a fun, cozy mystery series. Um, the author started writing these in 1990, and she's still writing them. I believe there's about 20 books in the series now. The last one came out in 2019. And real briefly, the, the backstory, which uh, sets the setting for the whole series, Faith Fairchild is a caterer in New York City. She loves big city life, can't imagine ever leaving it. But she falls head over heels in love with a minister, marries him, and moves with him to a very small New England town in Massachusetts where he's going to have his first church. And they also have a little baby. And so the series starts out, she's in this little town where everyone knows everyone else. They're the newcomers. Um, she misses big city life, but she loves her husband dearly. And as often happens, she just pretty much starts tripping over dead bodies. <laughs> and so each book she's helping to helping the local people solve a mystery. These are just fun, cozy mysteries. The character development is great. You get to meet all these really unique small town characters. There's a lot of humor in the books. Um, there are recipes because I think about three or four books into the series, Faith Fairchild decides to start writing a cookbook. And so every book contains a couple of her recipes. And I can definitely vouch for the brownie recipes. I've made them numerous times. They are excellent. This sounds like a really fun series. I love a good cozy mystery, especially one that deals with food um, and the brownies. Brownies are hard to get right. So it's good to have a good brownie recipe. I'm going to check that out. Yeah. Do you have to read all of the books and do you have to read them in order? Because it sounds like there's a lot of books. There are a lot of them, which is a good thing because if you, if you start and you like this character, you've got a lot to pick from. I personally think it's more fun to read them in order because you get to see the characters grow and develop. Uh, for example, Faith's little boy starts out as just a few months old and as the book as the books progress, he gets older, and that's kind of fun. But you can definitely skip around if you want to. You're not going to feel lost if you go out of order at all. Sounds good. The last book we have for you today is called Eat Joy, Stories and Comfort Food from 31 Celebrated Writers. And this book is exactly what it sounds like. It is a series, a collection of food essays from various authors most of whom you will probably recognize. And they all talk about how food can help you cope during dark times. Mm -hmm. And my favorite story is the one by Carmen Maria Machado, who wrote um, the short story collection, Her Body and Other Parties, which you might recognize, it's pretty popular. Um, and she has a story entitled The Meals of My Twenties, in which she talks about moving to a new town and adjusting and going through a bad breakup and how learning to cook for herself really helped her cope. And she also talks about her never ending love of Kraft mac and cheese, you know, the kind that comes in the blue box. Um, and the recipe at the end of her story is actually a modified version of Kraft mac and cheese that includes things like tomato sauce and hot dogs, um, which is just like the ultimate childhood comfort food that takes you back to like, you know, when things were simpler and more carefree in your life. And, um, in the instructions, she even includes a little note that says, of course, to eat it hot, but also to think about your past self with compassion. They got you here after all, which I thought was a very nice note to end her little collection with. Wow, I, lo I love that. I love that message. Who are some of the other authors that are included in this book? Yeah, so other authors include Lev Grossman. He wrote the Magician series, mm -hmm. which you might recognize either as the books or as the TV show that's out now. And um, Claire Massoud, who wrote mm -hmm. The Burning Girl in 2017. And okay. many other very cool authors. Definitely check it out. That sounds great. 
these, I, I want to read all of these, even the ones that I've already read. I just feel like reading them again, just that kind of times that we're, that we're living in. Uh, well, these are all the books that we have to share with you today. If you would like more book recommendations about this topic or really any other type of book, please request a personalized reading list from the library. You can simply use the link that's included in the description of the video. You're going to complete a brief questionnaire and then you will receive a list of books and or videos that have been selected especially for you by a member of the, the Naperville Public Library staff. And uh, it's a great way to add to your reading list and maybe get some suggestions for genres or topics that you're not so familiar with. And if you are interested in these books, but you don't want to check them out digitally, you'd rather have a physical copy, then the Naperville Public Library is now doing curbside pickup for physical materials. So if you want more information about that, you should check out our website or um, our Facebook page. Well, thank you so much for joining us at the Book Buffet today. We loved selecting and sharing these books with you today, and we look forward to seeing you next time. So until then, keep reading and be well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.